what am I doing with all these huge capacitors from a photo flash circuit and a disposable camera at a new Heiko soldering station? I'm going to make a high voltage capacitor bank. So, follow me along as I build this project. So here are the tools you will need to make the high voltage capacitor bank. First you'll need a lot of capacitors from uh, disposable cameras. Um, I got mine at a local store that processes disposable cameras and other film and they just gave me a whole bunch of them. So I've got 30, 40 capacitors here and they're all about 100 and they're all about 80 to 160 microfarads. I also you'll also need a Heiko actually I'll just need a soldering iron in general. Mine is a Heiko FX888. You'll also need wire strippers, solder, and you will probably need a uh, solid core wire for strip for uh, making jumpers if the leads don't overlap each other. Uh, pliers are nice for straighten straightening leads, and you'll need a way to get the capacitors off of the circuit boards, and you'll also have to leave one intact for a charging circuit. So those are the tools you'll need. A fume extractor is nice for soldering, like I have there, my Zytronic. So the first step is to take your capacitor leads and bend them at a 90 degree angle like that. And then you will want to align all the negatives together and overlap them, something like that. But you might be wondering, hey, mine don't reach. What do you do? You can make a jumper wire using your solid core wire. So I can't show you the soldering process, but I'll show you what happens after I solder it. So what I found the best method for soldering is, is to make a jumper and just tack it into place on one of the leads and then tack it into place on the other one, make a good solder connection, and then do the other one. And it's not great, but it'll definitely work and uh, hold. Just make sure nothing shorts out. That's the key. And you also want it to be strong. Like, I can drop this, and nothing cracks or breaks. That's what you want. You want a nice solder connection so there's no arcs, and you also don't want it to break. That's key. A trick that I discovered along the way of building this so far is that you want to try and get all the ones of the same height together because you don't want to have it to be like a mountain or something where it's all jagged. You want to have it to be kind of flat. If you, if anything, you want to kind of slope, if anything, not all jagged because it'll look neater and it probably will be easier to create jumpers. So that's a t quick tip. Okay, so I got a lot farther from the last time you saw me, but what I found to work pretty well is to, basically, I'm going to show you kind of how I do it, is I put them like that and make sure that they're lined up correctly, this is not, but, then I put one jumper in place and sort of just tack it, then I put another one in place, tack it, then solder the first one really well, and then solder the second one really well. That stops it from moving around and you can kind of keep it lined up where you want it. Now, if, when you lie this down, you can see it is not even remotely straight or flat. So, if I put it up here on this ledge, stuff's falling off my lap because I had it. This is perfectly flat to the wall. It kind of bulges in the middle. So, I'm kind of working on straightening it out. I haven't tested it yet, and make sure all the, cap uh, the caps are discharged before you start, otherwise you'll probably get a nasty shock or it could blow out your expensive soldering station. So, yeah. So here we are outside on my uh, front steps here and here's the finished capacitor bank. It's about 4500 microfarads at 300 volts. That's about, I think it was like 200 joules I calculated. That's pretty high. Uh, there's the charger circuit and I have a multimeter hooked up set to the 250 volt range. Um, I, I only set it off at 300 volts once and it fried the, the uh, flash tube. I'm like, hey, let's try the flash at like 30 times the amount of uh, capacitance it's designed to take. And it just sort of uh, flashed once, tried it again, never worked. So there you have it. The battery 
gets insanely hot when you do this. And I figured out why. When I, I hooked it up and then used my multimeter on the current setting, this thing draws about an amp from that little battery. And it generates a lot of heat. I mean, it got really hot after using charging this thing completely up about four or five times. So be sure to keep plenty of batteries on hand and let them cool down between shot er, between uh, charges. I would swap them out every two or three charges before it gets too hot. So I'm going to try to put the battery in one-handed. Uh, this is not the one that came with it, but this is uh, one that I found in my parts bin. It's an Energizer Ultimate Lithium. This thing uh, can supply a lot more power, and it has a really high milliamp hour rating. So, or amp hours. So it's not charging yet. Sometimes it starts automatically, sometimes it doesn't. So I have to find the button on the bottom carefully. Press it and get out of there. So you can see the needle start to move. You can hear it maybe. But those are all the capacitors charging right now. The sound you actually hear, I believe, is from the transformer. But anyway. So right now we are at, you're not going to be able to read it, I bet. Yeah, you can't read it. Right now we're at about 75 volts. Uh, we're at 100 volts. It doesn't charge very fast. If this was just one cap, maybe two, it would just go and be done. So this battery puts out about 1.6 volts, so it's a little bit above average. It's probably getting warm. Yeah, it's already getting kind of warm, so... We're already at 150 volts, though. We're pretty close. And, uh, like I said, that's 200 joules when it's fully charged. That's a lot of power. So if you do build this, be very careful. This could kill you if you... If that penetrated your skin, you'd be dead. Because that's a lot of power to go through you. Um, let's see. What are we up to? We're up to about 200. I'll stop it at when it pegs the needle. That'll be about 300. Or whenever the orange light comes on. It's not on yet, though. So, uh, I set it off inside at about 100 volts. And my ears were ringing. Afterwards, it's loud. And it was really bright. And it sent slag everywhere. And, uh, I decide, okay, so before I try a full charge, I better take it outside. And right now we're at about a little under 250. You can't really read that because it's not focusing. But, yeah, this is a huge capacitor bank. This is really overkill. If I was going to, I'm considering making a coil gun with this, I'd probably cut it in half. Because this is, takes way too long to charge to be worth it. Uh, maybe I'd have a place where you could hook up more capacitors in parallel so I could try it with more capacitance. But for a coil gun or something, you'd get like one shot off every five minutes. It takes forever. So right now, the needle is about as high as it gets. Let's try flipping it to the 300 volt setting. And I can't figure out the 300 volt setting because it doesn't really seem to work properly. Um, I'm assuming 150 now that I look at it. 150 is probably considered 300, but I'm not sure. So... Oh, and the reason I use an analog meter is because you can actually watch it charge. So the little orange light is on right now, and that's telling me that this thing is charged. So I'm going to discharge it, and it's going to be loud. The camera will not pick it up, though. Yeah, that was pretty loud. I can't hear anything now. Hum. <laughs> so, and it's already charging back up. So I'm going to unplug this. I pulled the battery, and it's hot. I mean, that's a lot of heat. It's drawing an amp for, that was like probably three minutes. So, but it's still charged. And it's not safe to leave a whole bank of capacitors on my front step where people are walking. So, and it arc welded at that time. Again, it's very loud. Especially in here because it's, uh, big and it's pretty hollow in here or it's like a big opening so the sound kind of reverberates and uh, gets sent throughout the 
neighborhood. People are probably wondering what it is. It's loud. So I still am not going to really touch this thing, but uh, anyway, as you can see, it's not really straight, but it kind of, uh, it's like stair steps. It kind of slowly goes up, which is what I wanted. That way it's not all jagged, and if I did cut it, it would be, I could get a pretty even sections. Uh, it took maybe a half hour to solder up. It's not bad. I got a good technique down. Make sure all, if you build this, make sure all the white stripes line up because these things could explode if connected backwards at 300 volts. Uh, how I have my setup is the positive wire from the, from the photo flash capacitor on the charger. That goes into the positive on the cap bank and then the negative to the negative. And uh, that's just a stock circuit. That's not altered at all except for the... Uh, glowing flash tube. You can see how it's kind of black right there. Not, uh, you really can't actually, but yeah, that's my cap bank. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you build this if you, uh, know how to do it without shocking yourself. I haven't been shocked building this, and I hope I don't because that would hurt bad. So there you have it. That is my 30 cap, my 30 capacitor free cap bank.